Two months ago, I started the Blocktober Challenge, where I built something every day for 31 days. This is week four, where I built seven spooky builds, including the 1.19 Warden. If you haven't already, check out the other three weeks, where I built the Minecraft live mobs, a hobbit village, and this fox called Monty. Anyway, let's get right into this week. <laughs> Which is a centuries old legend that has since become represented as a green skinned woman riding a magic broomstick. I began by using diamond blocks to create the pose for the witch on her broom before going in and painting it with other blocks. I went for some rather obscure block combinations such as warped hyphae and crying obsidian for the purple dress and oxidized copper and mossy cobblestone for the face. I also included a subtle gradient for each section of the witch as if she was being lit from below. I then added more details such as a lantern producing the light, a black cat with golden eyes and a cauldron dripping purple liquid. As well as this I added a background with a canopy below the witch and a crimson sky with a crescent moon made out of endstone. I'm rather fond of the build, even though it's definitely a smaller organic, I think I captured the detail and the shape of it really well. I do like the pose uh, and all of the little block combinations in the dress and the clothes. I'm also particularly fond of the little black cat on the end of the broom and the cauldron hanging from its tail. And also there are a few other details such as the red slippers that you may see in something like the Wizard of Oz. I've done structures, I've done human organics, and I've done animal organics. But until now, I haven't done terrain. I decided to do a little diorama of a misty moorland, the site of many scary tales, such as Sir Arthur Conan Doyle's The Hounds of the Baskerville. Moorlands are characterised by their rocky terrain, wet rainy conditions and mysterious tours dotted around the hills. Using a rather grayscale palette, I captured the bleakness of the moorland rather well, and perhaps, if you look hard enough, you will see the black silhouette of a devilish hound, or the faint outline of a ghostly horseman. I'm really pleased with how this turned out in, in rainy weather, it's really atmospheric, uh, especially with the campfires underneath the moss carpets, giving off this smoky, misty like fog effect, which I think is really cool. This is basically just like a, a mountainous, rocky hill. Uh, and then right at the top is some kind of tour, and I think this looks really nice, especially with all the uh, overgrown plant life with the, the cornflowers and, uh, and the berry bushes and things like that. I think this comes together as some really nice atmospheric terrain. Baba Yaga is a character originating from Slavic folklore. She is an elderly woman known for her witch-like appearance, her appetite for children, and most of all, her house that has a pair of chicken legs. For my interpretation of this house, I began with the legs themselves, going for a black colour rather than the typical tan colour of most chicken species. The house itself was a simple box shape, but the organic roof and wings, as well as the wild block palette and extra features, helped to make the entire structure feel more magical and living. The door and windows at the front are designed to slightly resemble a crooked face with two eyes, and the nighttime sky pattern of the A-frame gives it its mystical appearance. I actually think this is my favourite build so far. It's got a certain feeling of motion to it, which I really enjoy. You've got the legs trampling these trees as it's marching across the landscape. It's got the cauldron over here spilling and bubbling. It's got the lantern swinging and the wings flapping. It just feels really lively. It feels more like an action scene rather than a build, and I'm really pleased with how this one turned out. I'm particularly fond of this particular fairy tale. I think it's a really quirky design for a house. Uh, so I really enjoyed building this one. Time for another animal organic, this time an owl. I used sandstone, diorites, mushroom stems and calcite for the body of the owl to make for a white, soft belly. Meanwhile, the wings and head used darker brown and grey blocks which helped them stand out. I used player heads and walls to create the eyes and the beak, and shroom lights in the eyes to make them glow at night. The petrified tree on which it's perched was fairly simple to make. 
I used world edit brushes to make a couple deep slate wireframe, then added a gradient with some blackstone and deep slate tiles. Look at this fellow, isn't he adorable? And if you move around the plot as well, his eyes actually follow you around, which I think is a really cool feature. But currently, he's nameless. And so is the turkey from last week. So if you have name suggestions for either of them, I'm sure they would both very much appreciate it. Leave them down in the comment section down below if you have any. And here's what you were all waiting for, the Warden. I began with the dark cave terrain around the Warden, which suits the deep dark environment really well. I used end portal blocks as skulk blocks in the floor with blackstone tentacles coming up from the ground. The Warden is a mixture of turquoise colours like cyan wool and warped planks, with tans of the sandstone and bone blocks as well, on a blackstone and deep slate body. I think the design captured the blocky aesthetic of the mob really nicely, but it still kept its organic and detailed appearance. It's rather difficult trying to interpret what a texture of a mob would actually look like, but I think I did a pretty interesting job with it. At the bottom, you've sort of got hooves with different claws and stuff on it, and uh, then upwards, you've got like a, a furry shoulder blade area, and then a tentacle-like hand. And then the center here is like a rib cage with souls coming out of it, which is really cool. And then the face itself is just like a dark mouth with really blue lips and then no eyes which i think it's really interesting uh, overall i'm really excited to see the warden added into the game to see how accurate this interpretation of it is but i think this is a really cool feature i can't wait to see how it looks in the actual game the tale of this particular headless horseman who wields a jack-o-lantern as the replacement for his head apparently originated over in america this is a ghostly figure who rides a black, demonic stallion in search of his head, which he lost in battle. Once again, I made the basic shape of canvas using gold and diamond blocks, before painting it with different blocks and textures. I then moved it onto the plot and landscaped the floor a little, as if it were a muddy brown battlefield, with a moonlit sky as a backdrop. He may be a decapitated dark knight with a bloody stump for a head, riding a black demonic stallion, but you've got to admit, the pumpkin is adorable. In all seriousness though, I actually really like this build. I think the backdrop in particular really helps it stand out and gives it character. I also think the floor as well is nicely shaded with some uh, black terracotta on the floor, acting almost as if it's casting a shadow, which I think is really cool. I also think the proportions of the horse and the knight itself are pretty good for this scale. It is really difficult to do them at this scale, but I think I did a pretty successful job at this. And to wrap up week four, I decided to combine structures and organics to build a trick or treating Halloween scene. I used world edit to create the basic shape of the house before adding depth and minor details by hand, such as the porch, the door and the window. The trick-or-treaters were fairly simple, but at such a small scale, it was hard to get much detail in them. Adding decorations like pumpkins and bunting was also fairly straightforward. Finally, I went in and textured the build by hand, which really helped finish it off. I actually think, out of all of the builds I've done so far, this one was actually the hardest to do. I mean, scaling up a building and still making it detailed, but not too detailed to make it look interesting is actually pretty hard to do, but I think I did a successful job. I'm pretty pleased with the Halloween decorations and the texturing of them. I don't think it's too over detailed, but I do think it's detailed enough that it's interesting to look at. And I think the organics, while they are cartoony, I think they're pretty cool to look at. We've got a little ghost at the front and a little witch at the back, and I think that's really cool. Uh, even if it does look a little bit goofy and cartoony in places, I think it looks pretty nice anyway. And there we have it, all seven builds for this week. Thank you so much for watching, I do hope you enjoyed. Let me know which one was your favourite down below. I will see you all next time with the Blocktober finale, where I will be providing a world download, so don't you worry about that. Anyway, I'll see you all next time. Bye for now.